yeah, go ahead. All right. Welcome, everybody, to 52 Living Ideas. Today is Poetry Monday. Uh, thank you guys for joining me here. Today's featured poet is Juan Ramon Jimenez. And he is, I mean, he's, I think of him as being extremely popular. I'm not sure if that holds true worldwide, but I consider him one of the greats. His most well-known poem is I Am Not I. Uh, you guys may have heard it before. I'm going to share that with you here um, today. And then um, I would welcome you guys to share any um, of the poems of his that you guys like or any other poem that caused your fancy. Um, I'm going to not do our super spiel because everyone here is a regular. So I'm gonna get right to it. And um, forgive me if I, I step away a little bit. Yo no soy yo. Yo no soy yo, soy este. Que va a mi lado sin yo verlo. Que a veces voy a ver y que a veces olvido. El que calla sereno cuando hablo. El que perdona dulce cuando odio. El que pasea por donde no estoy. El que quedará en pie cuando yo muera. I am not I. I am not I. I am this one walking beside me whom I do not see. Whom at times I manage to visit and whom at other times I forget, who remains calm and silent while I talk, who forgives gently when I hate, who walks where I am not, who will re remain standing when I die. I find this to be one of the absolute best poetic forms for speaking of the um, internal dialogue we have with ourselves our um, human struggle for the concept of a self to me is embodied just beautifully in this very succinct um, poem. So I wanted to share that with you here today. Um, and uh, I am going to open it up to the rest of you. If you have a poem of his that you're not familiar of the Spanish version, just let me know. I probably do have it. Um, but um, I, so I do invite you guys to speak. If not, I have others that I'm happy to share. Um, welcome and uh, go ahead and uh, cue yourselves up in the chat, type exclamation. It, you are not required to read a poem by um, Jimenez. Um, he's just a featured poet. So I do encourage you to do so if you have any of his that you do like, but we welcome all the poets, including your very own personal poems. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Sure. Uh, I'm going to read one of uh, Juan Ramon Jimenez, if I hope I said that correctly. Uh, it's called Oceans. Um, I have a stuck feeling that my boat has stuck, struck down there in the depths against a great thing and nothing happens. Nothing. Silence. Waves. Nothing happens. Or has everything happened? And are we standing now quietly in the new life? Um, very short poem. Uh, I like it uh, primarily because I have been stuck at sea in the past. Uh, and I actually have found it to be incredibly peaceful uh, where you do listen to the waves just hitting up against the boat in the silence. So, uh, that was one of the poems. Actually, I liked a couple of the poems, so, but I'll let other people read first. Go ahead, JP. Uh, this is called Song by Juan Ramon Jimenez, translated by Antonio de Nicolás. Song. Your voice will never die. Your voice, your voice, your voice. Your voice will continue to sound forever, ashes in the soil of life. Your voice will continue to sound forever, your voice, your voice, your voice, your voice, through the immense vault of the night. Your voice will continue to sound forever through the immense vault of my soul. Your voice, your voice, 
your voice like the magic echoes of the stars. Thank you, JP. Uh, what about that uh, song called to you? Because Joe sent me the person's name because I forgot to put it in a week ago and forgot all about this. And he sent it to me just a little bit ago. And that's the first one I came up with after I am not I, which I knew somebody was going to read first. And it just called to me because I kind of liked it. It kind of has a feeling of Walt Whitman sometimes calling out about the sound, the song of my soul. And he says things like that also. So I kind of felt the connection that way. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Um, Anyone else like to read a poem? I can, I have plenty for filler. There is no, no, no um, lack of having some of his poetry here on this end of the poem. He actually wrote a poem to Dante. Since some of us have, have studied Dante, I will share that with you. But first up, let's go with Steve first. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> this poem is called My Symphony by William Ellery Channing. Uh, he lived from 1818 to 1901. He uh, was a tour guide for uh, Thoreau at Concord. He uh, showed him around uh, the uh, rivers, and I uh, thought that was an interesting fact about him. To live content with small means, to seek elegance rather than luxury, and refinement rather than fashion, to be worthy, not respectable, and wealthy, not rich, to study hard, think quietly, talk gently, act frankly, to listen to the stars, the birds, the babes, and sages with an open heart, to bear all cheerfully, do all bravely, await occasions, hurry never. In a word, to let the spiritual unbidden and unconscious grow up through the common. This is to be my symphony. That's lovely, thank you. Can, I'm so sorry, could you give me the a poet's name one more time. William Ellery Channing. Channing, got it, thank you. All right, so I'm going to read you guys the poem that um, Jimenez wrote to Dante. Um, so the, he, he quotes um, a, a Dante quote um, in, um, I think it's Italian, but it could be Latin. I'm actually not sure. It says, Allegro si che appena il conoscia. I'm not sure which language that is, but that's Dante said that. And his response, I guess, is to that, that line. And he says, uh, your sonnet, just like some pure and naked woman, seated me on her chaste knees, put her heavenly arms around me. Afterward, I dreamt of it and of her. I saw a fountain that arched two streams down into a basin, the first, and then from it, two others poured, more delicate. Tu soneto, lo mismo, que una mujer desnuda y casta, sentándome en sus piernas puras, me abrazó con sus brazos celestiales. Soñé después con él, con ella. Era una fuente que dos chorros arqueaban en una taza primera, la cual luego los vertía finos en otras dos. Um, I think this is maybe some of the highest praise a poet could receive for another poet to say, you know, your, your poet struck me so lively, so vividly, um, like a, as a concrete thing that, you know, here it almost like 
smacked him upside the face. So, you know, he's used, obviously he uses much more beautiful imagery, but um, I think that that's just a, a beautiful um, homage to another poet. I think um, for most poets, it's, you know, it's something that's uh, to aspire to. So, all right, folks, um, go ahead and uh, type exclamation if you would like to share a poem. If not, we can, maybe you guys are all just chomping at the bit to do collaborative poetry. I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds. <clears throat> what do you think, Shikant? Do we move on to collaborative poetry? Do I read another poem? His poems are very short, but um, he's, it's interesting, uh, Shikant, he gives a good, um, a good example of uh, extreme depth of imagery and, um, you know, what he's bringing out, what he would invoke in you in a very small subset of words, which is kind of cool. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to say one thing. I mean, it's, um, it's a really unique style and I'm kind of, you know, very intrigued by it. So I don't want to read any other poetry. I just want to hear. And also it's a really amazing experience to hear it in two languages. So, uh, so thank you. Certainly, I'm gonna. Um, so Joe has his hand up, and then I'll I'll, I'll pick one one other to um to read for you. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Um, another one I found was "Rose of the Sea." Um, the white moon takes the sea away from the sea and gives it back to the sea. Beautiful, conquering by means of the pure and tranquil. The moon compels the truth to dilute itself. That is the truth truth become whole, eternal, solitary, though it is not, though it is not so. Yes, divine plainness. You pierce the familiar certainty. You place a new soul into whatever is real, unpredictable rose. You took the rose away from the rose and you could give back the rose to the rose. I personally like the beginning of it more than anything else. Um, essentially the white moon. And I've always thought about that, how it's reflecting off the sea. Um, and it's almost like kind of this relationship that the, the water has with the moon. So uh, that's just my personal. I like that poem. Uh, it's, it's one I'm a fan of. Um, all right, so go ahead, JP. It, Paul had exclamation point before me. You're absolutely correct. I apologize. I missed that. Go ahead, Paul. I don't want to write, read. I am just thanking you for, uh, this is a remarkable poet and I'm not familiar with them and I think he's set up a whole trance into the evening here. I can't bear to disturb it. It's, it's beautiful. It's an amazing poet. I'm, he's having a big effect on me. I can't read anything. That's all I really wanted to say. <laughs> and thank you. You're, you're most welcome. Um, go ahead, JP. Well, I'm from New York, Long Island. So the first thing I was given before the slap on the butt when I was born was a big ego. So my pride will say, hey, I'll go ahead and read one of my poems that's similar toward his, and we'll see what happens. And you can see where I put it in chat. Use yourself. Move the universe. Shift it over just one breath in a step and a snap and a slip one iota of a particular quantum. What hasn't moved is you, you beside yourself. That's lovely. I will say it is quite a talent to be able to see um, other styles of famous poets in your poetry and pick so spot on. I, I'm not convinced that's a skill I possess, but I, you're, you're absolutely right. If if I had not been told this was your poem, I could have heard it and you could have in theory made me believe that it was an unknown poem of um, Jimenez. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. 
We will uh, happily stroke your ego just a smidge here. That was great. Um, I, I, I'm just going to throw in, I, I really feel comfortable being with you all. You have to know that because when I first started here, when I first started in meetups back in January, people always said, I'm always sitting there with my cab and I don't speak. And then I started commenting in different meetups and I got comfortable so that I'm even sharing stuff. It's not like this is me. This is because I'm really happy to be with you all. Not just that I'm saying I'm good. I'm saying y'all are really good. I like working with you on the collaboration. I'm not on the edge of my seat for the next part too. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I, I find that the feeling is very much neutral, mutual here. So there, there's a poem. Um, it's a demanding poem that uh, Jimenez wrote and it's called Intelligence Give Me. And I really like the tone of it. I just, I like, it's kind of like a supplication to the, the universe as it were. Um, and I just, I, it's, I can, uh, again, I can empathize with it. Like he, he invokes something that I, I'm sure most of us has felt at some point or other. Intelligence, give me the exact name of things. I want my word to be the thing itself created by my soul a second time so that those who do not know them can go to the things through me all those who have forgotten them can go to the things through me. All those who love them can go to the things through me. Intelligence, give me the exact name and your name and theirs and mine for things. Um, and I, I don't think this is hubris of thinking that it is possible to know the exact name of things. I think in fact, it shows a very much self-awareness of the lack of ability to know the, the, the true name of any one thing. Um, and so it's, to me, what comes to mind here is sometimes you write something and you may have one word and you're like, that is not the right word. And it bugs you. And you, this poem is considered incomplete. And sometimes it's a phrase, a line, and sometimes it's just one word. And you know that if you can just find the right way to rephrase it, the poem will be complete. Um, and that's that's kind of what this one invoked in me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and read it for you guys in um, Spanish, just so you can hear it. And, and just so you know, he is one of, the few poets that I actually am now more common with his English um, poetry because I had only ever in the past read him in Spanish. Inteligencia, dame el nombre exacto de las cosas. Que mi palabra sea la cosa misma. Creada por mi alma nuevamente. Que por mi vayan todos. Los que no las conocen. A las cosas. Sorry. Uh, que, lo, los que no las conocen a las cosas, que por mí vayan todos. Los que ya las olvidan a las cosas, que por mí vayan todos. Los mismos que las aman a las cosas. Inteligencia, dame el nombre exacto. Y tuyo, y suyo, y mío de las cosas. Um, and an interesting thing here is that in Spanish, the word alma for most of his poetry is translated to mean soul in English. So there's not a distinction made, um, which, I, which I found to be kind of uh, fascinating. There's a couple other of his poems where he alludes to the soul in English. And in the Spanish original, he's using the word heart which, you know, that, the, the whole translation bit, that's a whole other conversation, right? <clears throat> okay, um, have you had enough? <laughs> Marissa, um, yes. do you mind if we talk about uh, Jimenez a little bit now? Because once we go into the breakout room, it'll be a different context. You know, sure. you can this context, this is, I think, a good time because I, uh, you know, I've, I'm really, doing a deep dive into language. And every time I hear something great, you know, it is producing kind of, it's 
producing all kinds of new thoughts. So look, look at this, look at this poet. You know, see the way in which he is using language is very different. It is his own way of expressing, own way of making abstract points using concrete in a very different way. He's creating his own metaphors. Partly it is, I think, also the language, that it's a different language. So lots of the tools are coming from another language, which you're not familiar with in English. So they, you see them, you, you see a more, you know, a different complexity of it. So I think it has something to do with the language and it has to do with this individual, you know, creator who is using language and showing us something through him, which we did not see before. And it's odd that you can't, I, it's not like, I can see that there are several new things here that I saw when the poem was being read. I can't quite pin down various things, but I know that there is a lots of new interesting ways of looking at life that are being presented very simply. So it's really, really fascinating. Shikant, he's, he also, it's, it's, um... He also is one of the poets for whom you see such a very clear and steady uh, growth throughout the years. So his old, early poetry, it's longer, it's more verbose. As he gets older, he gets more succinct. And it's, um, you know, Paul had mentioned um, yesterday that, you know, his, his, life, um, his life's work has been learning, you know, how to express, you know, his poetic um, muse, as it were in the most um, you know, precise and the best way for himself. And I, I think that with this poet, it's, it's very clear. I, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't know him. I can't say if he, he knew that, but um, it's, a, it's a fascinating thing to see because it's not any less, there's nothing lost. It's not like his earlier poetry is less impactful. It's just more verbose as it were. The other thing that remains with me is how individual language is, that all these great people make the language their own and they develop a system of expression, you know, almost like an entire like a way of expression, which is all their own. You know, you can read some, some people's poetry, you don't know who has, without knowing that they have written it, and you can actually see the signature of the way in which they are using language. Something else to note is that he does not write of politics or of religious doctrines. He doesn't write about the mistakes of others, about his own troubles, or even his own opinions. And yet, mm. for so many of his poems, if you wished you could make a case for some of those being embodied, he, he writes mostly of you know it's like it's in he, he's looking internally and sharing with you what's coming out from within um but it's it's so well done that it just evokes pretty you can pretty much you know it'll speak to you on whatever level you happen to be at that point in your life right. no and we have you do have to take it with a grain of salt when i say that his later poetry is better because he moved from spain to puerto rico <laughs> and he died in Puerto Rico. So he, we, we claim him, even though he's not, he's not technically from us. <clears throat> well, um, all right. Uh, if anybody has any comments, you're welcome to, on, on this poetry, you're welcome to make them now, or we will go to the breakout rooms. All right. So shall we start the breakout rooms? Um, what I'm going to do, uh, Joe, I'm going to put you in the same room as Maritza. So if Maritza doesn't feel up to it, you can go ahead and take over. Actually, if you are up for it, Joe, that would be a fun experience for me. I have never been the um, participant calling out the lines while somebody else scribes. So, um, if you're if you're okay with it, I would I would that would be a great great experience. Um, I might sit here with my eyes closed and just call out lines. That that could be fun. Is that good? All right, uh, give me just a Oops. second. 
he forgot to animate the AI. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so let me get started. Um, we'll again the same uh, thirty minutes. Yes. Uh, wait, wait. Oh, we do oh, have somebody to, uh, new. Want to explain? Yes, we do. We we have so so. Um, most of us here are regulars. Apologies, uh, Michelle, if we're being a little informal. We're slightly smaller today than we're we're used to, so we're we're being slightly more informal in this. What we do in the second. Oh, we lost somebody in the um, second, um, third of our Poetry Mondays. What we do is we do breakout rooms, and this breakout is not recorded. And you go so you go into a smaller um, session with a couple folks, and what you're doing is you're going to create a collaborative poem together. We've been doing this now for a little over thirty weeks, so you know we're getting a little more refined. We we've started experimenting with the call and response style of poetry. So today, and I always give a theme, and then people go and they kind of call out lines for the first twenty minutes, and then in the last ten minutes, they restructure those lines to make it a slightly more cohesive poem, and then we come back together and we read the poems and talk about them. Um, it's, it's a fascinating experience. It's quite a treat if you've never done it before. You're not required um, to participate, but we really do encourage you to. It's, it's a great experience. So for today, the theme is um, uh, summer and fall, and we're going to do a call, call and response of summer and fall speaking to each other. And we're looking at each group is going to do a total of <laughs> Joe, you are not muted. We're all here in your long suffering side. <laughs> oh, no, I was like, I was looking back at something else. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, oh, gosh, summer and fall. Is that upsetting? It's terrible. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to do um, 16 uh, lines, four um, stanzas with, um, with four lines each. Um, there's no requirement to rhyme. That's that's to be decided within your group, whatever you guys feel comfortable with. And um, if you need to go more than six li 16 lines, that's up to you as well. We did find that 16 was a good number for the call and response because it does give you enough time to shape them into the call and response. Um, oh, go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't here for the experiment last week or I think it was your first week you tried that. It was. But I just, I'm not clear on what you decided between all the variations you talked about and how it went and what we learned from that. And just give a little guidance based on last week so I can understand what we're doing and what happened. And thank you, that's what I- what Okay, I, I, let, let, me, let me go ahead and repeat the format one more time so that we are all on the same page. And it worked pretty well. It worked very well within each of the groups. And then we, kind of cross-pollinated. We did call and response across the group and that worked very well too. So, uh, but I think this is going to work better because summer and fall are far more clearer things to hang your thoughts on. So uh, I think there'll be a lot more commonality. Um, and so I think, I think it'll work out well. And I'll give, uh, so uh, it, it works very well. So we'll, let's go ahead and try it. Uh, does that make sense, Paul? Yeah, you'll explain in the room. I don't know if if one group's going to respond to the other and no. Or, or... This is this, this is a format. Okay. So yeah, this is a format. Each of the groups is going to do one stanza for summer, summer one. One stanza for fall one, which is a response to that. Then another stanza for summer two, and another stanza for fall two okay so it's going to be four lines for summer four lines for fall in response similarly then summer and fall like that right then so wait wait Chica, i'm so sorry did you say so once a a a quartet a a, a group a stanza is four lines yes those four lines will be summer summer and then right okay just making sure because last week we weren't on the same page we got that a little mixed up that's why I wanted to repeat it. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we have repeated. You, you said something. I have responded. You've, you've. So it's a, sh a complete handshake here. It's not going to go wrong. All right. So let's go ahead and start uh, the breakout rooms. So we'll do this for thirty minutes. Right. Open all the rooms. Go to join. I'm going to pause the recording.
Oh, my, uh, how are you doing? I'm all right. The last, our last two lines were headache inducing. <laughs> 10 more seconds is all we need. I know. It's all we needed was 10 more seconds. Oh, uh, do, do, do you want to take the 10, 10 more seconds now? You're welcome. No, that's right. <clears throat> Joe will edit it secretly. Go yeah, on, Joe. Joe, Joe's going to make it perfect for us. I like that he's muted. So we're just going to, we're, we're, we're going to take that he's saying yes. He's smiling. So I think he's saying, yep, got it. I already found the perfect word. It's no longer around. We're good. Okay. So um, do you guys want to go first or do you want us to go first? Depends if James finishes. Go first. We'll let, we'll let Joe do his magic. Joe. Uh, and who, who's going to be reading? Uh, you're going to be doing call and response. So two people have to read it. Yes. And, and if, I, if I may, um, uh, just a reminder, well, let's try very hard when reading. So know what section's yours. And what I would love to see, and something that we should, I'd like to see us practice in, when the poem, so when the poem reading is in session, nothing should be uttered that is not the poem. Don't say, okay, don't say, sorry, don't say, where's my line? It's okay to pause if you're not sure your spot, to look for it, but don't say anything unless it's the poem. Um, it's just, it's a thing of mine. We haven't yet successfully done this. I would love for us to do that. Um, Shikant, did you want to read your poem all first? And sure. then we were going to read ours, or do you want to immediately do the call and response between them? No, first we'll do individual poems. We'll Good. read ours first, and then you read yours. Uh, so okay. the way we are going to read our poem, uh, folks, is Paul and JP are going to do the call and response. So Paul will do the summer, summer one. Uh, JP will do the, the fall one. Uh, I'm going to put it in the chat uh, as well. Uh, I'm going to share the screen. Uh, so uh, let me go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, DLJ, would you be okay with reading um, uh, fall for us? Yeah. Well, and Joe, you want to read summer? You want to give it to someone else? Uh, I'll read summer. You have summer, so summer fall. Awesome. I'm going to. Unless, gonna unless you're up for, unless you no, want to read I'm it. Gonna, I'm going to listen. Okay, so we're going to start. Uh, I'm going to start sharing screen. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, so I've got summer one and summer two, right? That's right. So you do summer okay. one, and then yep. um, JP does fall one, and okay. then JP does fall two. Okay, Maritza, I'll try not to interject if any editorialness at all. If I can help it, I might cough. That would be the only thing that would happen. Okay. <laughs> no. Somebody mute. Okay. Break my heart. It is longer than the days. Temperature measures the purity of light and heat in summer. Love was the deepest weight when I was falling in love. It blanketed me in softness, enveloping me in its colors. Give my heart a break. Give my burnt skin a chance to breathe. The bursting life around me heals in night and heat of summer. The wait for spring gets colder. I am content with inner heat. Safety in numbers, I count purely on myself. Maurice Sancho. So DLJ, do you have it up? Do you want, yeah, do you guys no, need me to throw it, it on the screen? Yeah, can you put it up? I can, I can share it unless you have it up, Joe, or do you want me to share it? Uh, I can share it actually. Perfect, go right ahead. <clears throat> so ready with a scrolling so I don't have to interrupt with, could you scroll a bit, please? I, I just want to make sure, can we see the whole thing? Yes, we can. Yeah, we got it. All right, hang on. 
Shall I begin or? Your I? summer and uh, DOJ is fall. Okay. After the spring cleaning, I breathe and let grow. The sun and I, the sun and I, we dance and celebrate the lack of snow, an accumulation, a summation of seed, air, and soil. We welcome forest fires and droughts. The dancing leaves dance a minuet, making their way to the ground. Unfazed, they mingle with embers and ashes. I'll bring the rain to quench that thirst. First swing with the hottest time of the year, glistening radiance across the ponds. It is a time of carefree days and sweet scented nights of love. Above, the geese are homeward bound. I'll aid you brown and red and gold, maturing harvest old. An ancient dance circles around again. It's not the end, but time going around. Wonderful. Thank you. So how about we use the same order? We will start with Paul doing summer one, and then DLG just does the fall one. Right, and then uh, Paul does summer two. DLG just does fall two for your poem. Everybody's re reading the same paragraph that you oh, okay. hands up, that you did last time. So we're mixing the two together, right? Yes. So it's going oh, to okay. be, uh, so it's <laughs> going to start with Paul and DLG. Uh, you read the same one that you read read last time, then. Automatically, next one up without any break is Joe for summer one, and then JP for fall one, then uh, Joe for summer two, and JP for fall two, the same ones that you read. Just one quick thing. Um, Joe, I, I couldn't open your file. I don't know what format that I didn't, it didn't, oh wait, no. Word. Why it's like Microsoft Word. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't save as Microsoft Word, okay. Um, if did you, I tried to upload it twice. There's a third one that was in there. Maybe you tried to upload one of the earlier ones. Uh, Paul and, uh, Paul and JP, can you read the poem in the chat? I can, I can read the poem. I have it up in the chat. JP, can you read the poem in the chat? Yes. I've got to copy it over to another medium. Okay, I'll go when you say. I'm gonna Are we ready to? Uh, 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 wait a minute. I just want to make sure that Joe and uh, DLG are all set. DLG, I just posted it in the chat in case you needed to grab oh, it. From well, there. I, I just grabbed it from Joe's day. Oh, perfect. Okay, okay, so you have it. You're able. You're able. You have it. DLG. Yeah, okay. I got it. All right. Um, so Paul, you're all set, right? Paul and uh, JP. All right. So let's get started. Paul, go ahead. Break my heart, it is longer than the days. Temperature measures the purity of light and heat in summer. The dying leaves dance a minuet, making their way to the ground. Unfazed they mingle with embers and ashes. I'll bring the rain to quench that thirst. Give my heart a break. Give my burnt skin a chance to breathe. The bursting life around me heals in night and heat of summer. Above the geese are homeward bound. I'll aid you brown and red and gold, maturing harvest old. An ancient dance circles around again. It's not the end, but time going around. After the spring cleaning, I breathe and let grow. The sun and I, we dance and celebrate the lack of snow an accumulation and summation of seed, air, and soil. We welcome forest fires and droughts. Love was the deepest weight when I was falling in love. It blanketed me in softness, enveloping me in its colors. First swing with the hottest time of the year, glistening radiance across the ponds. It is a time of carefree days and sweet scented nights of love. The wait for spring gets colder. I am content with inner heat. Safety in numbers, I count purely on myself.
Thank you, folks. I like it. It's always cool how it seems like it's never going to work, but it somehow still does. Let's invite folks to um, share their thoughts on this um, this experience, this style. Um, I have been studying metaphors and we did this poem on love. And it's very fascinating to see how many different things are brought together, like the heat, warm, cold. Then there is the softness. There is the weight. There is the colors. A breaking, falling, it just goes on and on. So I love, you know, how all of these concepts allow you to explore the nature of love. I don't know that it can be done without, without them. DLJ. Yeah, just going over again. I like I like the uh, the melding the two together. Um, although I did, they didn't, it, it wasn't quite right. So I think they, there needs to be another editing phase where we say, okay, now we're putting together which bits go where, right? So I think neither of the endings particularly will work for me. Um, we messed ours up. My fault as much as anything else. Um, uh, but the it, but the the ending of the the other group poem i think is is okay but it should have gone earlier so i think that so you know what i'm saying so once you've got the bits together then you can say oh i can say well that bit works there and you know we can start rejigging them again right so we need a second a secondary editing phase um and i think i think it would be really good so yeah it, it's it's one of those things where you just you you, you know you're in something quite good but it's got a lot of potential uh but it just i just think you will need a bit more right? um but yeah, I really like the idea of what we just did. Collect, I mean, the two together and stuff. That kind of, yeah, I'd like to do that again, I think. Thanks. Thank you. Joe? Actually, I was going to bring up something similar. I was like, you know, even it would pay if we had this number of people, maybe even to do a last 10 minute, 10 to 15 minute, maybe uh editing phase to see if and i don't think it's like it would be too chaotic um but i do like the combining of the two poems and when they're set up the way they are um i also uh i i like this i like the topic this particular i think that this is actually this topic in particular actually lent itself to this call and response uh and would have been a little bit easier to edit um so i, I think that uh I don't know. I, maybe it's, um, you know, I, I think we all have similar ideas about the seasons um, and what they represent. So I think that that makes it a little bit easier to combine at the end. We don't agree on what they're called, but that's a transatlantic thing. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing, um, I've got uh, JP and then Steve uh, raising their hands. Let's uh, go ahead, JP. One idea, if we're going to work further on an editing or more of a revising there, there at the end, what if we group one and group two are done with their poems up to a point and then switch the poems over and let the other group finish nice. the revisal? Nice. Wow. And in an idea of call and response, what if one time before we even went to call and response, say we've got 10 people. Every person has to give a word that has to go into the other person's poem or into both poems. Okay, that's too complicated for me at this time in the morning. That sounds all right. <laughs> go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I, I think as the assignments get more challenging, I you know do think we need more time, uh, especially in the editing phase. I felt there was a room for improvement. Uh, so I think we needed more time. 
I, I agree. I felt I felt the same um, in, in this one. We it was it was a very clear. We knew what we wanted to get out of it. We also all of us, at least in my group, um, we all of us felt that we it, we hadn't quite gotten there, and it was mostly just due to a lack of time. I really like the idea of a group, um, small editing before we we combined the the two poems. Um, go ahead, DJ. Um, we still got 30 minutes. We could do it. I, I would like, um, first I would, I would like to, um, hear, um, if I, if I don't mean to call you on the spot, but if you're willing, Michelle, I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, you're, you're one of the few here that hasn't, that's a little newer to the group. I would love to get your, your thoughts on the experience. If, um, if you're willing to chime in. And then Trikant also, I'd be curious in how, how you felt it went for your group. Okay, I don't want to put her on the spot. If she um she chimes in, that's fine. <coughs> Go ahead, Paul. Great. It it sort of it bell. Here we are trying to say, well, let's refine it to make it really fit together, and it still baffles me after all these weeks how it comes even close to fitting together. <laughs> And I, 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 um, I'm not sure I see value in trying to make it appear as if we were trying to do it as a coherent whole after the fact. I don't know, that's a whole other exercise we're debating about whether we should try now, but there's two different tones here I see in terms of, there's one, you guys took, and I think you're being way too hard on yourself. I think your poem is very beautiful and it's sort of taking what I might call the Robert Frost approach of, the beauty of a natural scene and its effect on your emotions in a very rather literal sense you know that's how it looks to me but then there's some reflection that comes about it but it's like the minuet of the birds and the the um glittering listening radiance and how that feels you know and we sort of really concentrated on this more abstract emotion of love and then used metaphors related to the seasons. These are completely different approaches. It's a miracle they make any sense together. And I just am just wanted to, that's how I see it. But yet, there's something beautiful about the dance back and forth of the two methods of constructing thoughts about the fall. So uh, I don't have more to say than that. It's very, very interesting and useful exercise as we, I think about myself too. Um, how much do you try to keep a tone? Like if you give a poem to some editor critic, they'll go, I noticed a big shift in your tone right here. You know, you better have done that for a reason. And well, we did it because we merged two poems written by two different groups. So those are my thoughts. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Shikant, what, what did you think about the poems both in your group and the, the group one? Yeah, and I think I, I want to echo what uh, Paul said. Uh, I think like we, we took a completely different, see, th this is what I find every time actually, not just this time, every time. The, the two groups take go along completely different paths because what happens is that it is collaborative. So when somebody says something, like Paul said something about, you know, heartbreak, and so immediately it went along that line. So then the entire summer and fall was used as a tool to describe that. And that's where it went. And then everything was along that line. Whereas you guys did such a fantastic job of describing actually what happens in summer and actually what happens in fall. We just use the fact that it is hot and it's cold, really. <laughs> It, it worked very well, but that's the thing that we took from summer and fall and then focused mostly on this, this emotion of love using that. So it is, it is uh, very, very interesting. So that's it. I, I'd like to make a comment or two on it. So we, this is only our second time um, taking, doing the call and response. And last week we did very similar, you know, it was uh, the two um, stanzas with four lines each for the call and response. And then we came together and we merged them. And I will say for both times, I did feel that it might have been, um, it was the ending, 
left something to be desired. The manner in which we had shaped the stanzas. So I, I, I think that, I don't know if I would want to do a whole huge um, editing session together, but it might be, there, there may be value in when we come back together, group one reads their, their poem, group two reads their poem, and then um, we, all of us now have access to seeing both poems. And then we decide as a group of these, you know, eight stanzas when it's four and four, four calls, four responses, which do we want to go, which one do we want to go first? Which one do we want to go second? Which do we want to go third? That might be a fun um, thing to try. I think maybe like five minutes it might be. I think I might introduce that. Um, what do you What do you think, uh, Shrikant? I think that's a great idea because what it does is that it lets us see the both the poems to get, you know, together and trying to say, okay, how, how do we match this? And it might turn out to be very, I mean, we, today we just did it in a mechanical way. Mm -hmm. but, and we did last week as well. We did the same. Yes. Right. And again, I, I also have a little bit of a, um, you know, like, I, like I've mentioned, you know, I fall in love a little bit with all your poems. So the idea of us changing them after we've read them, I'm like, no, there are babies. I also, I think, I think what happens is that, you know, if there are people who put the poems together. But, but the nice thing is we warn you beforehand here that we're, we're breaking them apart. Yes. We're not changing the actual words though. So I figured like that's much easier to do. And in actuality, it does, um, it would have a more co cohesion because um, I, I noticed both last week and this one, it does work. It's great. And like Paul, it's, it's like, it's almost like a shock every time. I'm like, there is no way this is going to happen. This, this is the time we fail and we fall on our face and we don't, but it would be, but it, it, it does from a slightly more demanding perspective. It's kind of one of those um, things where, you know, all of us are poets. We can move them around to sound more cohesive, I think, and it would be easily done. Um, oh, go ahead, DLJ. Yeah, as you just reminded me, I think it might have been in the first session. So what was it, 38 weeks ago? Um, and I think- 31? Shrikan, I think Shrikan asked the question about uh, what, what is your writing approach, right? And I said, I've got a Harold in my head, right? Because my writing partner. Um, but I also talked about the fact that when you give it over to the other person, you know they're going to do something with it. And that, that when you, first time you do that, it's like, oh, I don't want to let go. All right. So I'm absolutely with you on that. But that that's the hurdle to get over. And then, of course, at some point later on, this is going to sound horrifying, but you're going to have a DLJ in your head, right? Because you're going to know what my editing is going to be of your poem, right? And vice versa, which again, is quite scary, right? Um, so I'm curious as to, because we're getting to know each other's styles a bit, I think then. At what point will we have the other another person in our head as we're writing? So just, I'm going to ask you that in a year's time. When did it happen? Go ahead, Shikha. DLJ, you are used to renting your head to people. <laughs> and there are <laughs> my head. Bad tenants in your head. Uh, so uh, let me ask you the question. You may be, it may be easier for you to answer this question than us who are not used to having that. But what's, what has been like, it's been 31 times that you have showed up here. Oh, and it? It's something like that, at least 20 oh, missed, times. Uh, I, I, what is this like, you know, having us do we oh, horrifying. Do we institute oh, as just horrible. temporary visitors? in your head or we stay for a little while what's what well, how does it happen and well, okay is, is your so, head big enough to accommodate more people is my head big enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I've, I've been to a therapist about all these voices in my head and it's it's uh and each time they're multiplying right um um no well okay so i'm used to the process of, of handing it over and and to me the very first time i did that with a writing partner it was it, it was a physical, yeah, it was um, visceral. That's the word I'm it, it was like, oh, this is difficult, right? And then because I found somebody with similar style and so on, and because we settled into a, a style of doing it, in other words, the first, the first commentary um, that you get back is not 
that's rubbish, right? It's it's like, what were you trying to achieve with this? So it's, it's a kind of open question kind of thing, right? And then you can, oh, okay. So I, sit, and then, and then the other person will start saying, had you thought about not do this? It's like, had you thought about moving from emotion to event or place to time or something like that, right? And you think, oh, I'm sort of that way, right? And that inspires you. And then the last, there's another phase of polishing, which is what I was kind of suggesting for the last, you know, it was essentially is when you do that fine tuning part, when you say that word's clunky, um, should we try a different word for that? That kind of thing, right? Um, so I think I, I see that kind of thing has ha happened here. It's kind of evolved. It seems to be a, quite a natural thing. Um, so the, the the sessions that I've attended, yeah, it's, it's um yeah it's quite beautiful actually yeah it's, it's kind of working I, i'm enjoying it and and yeah the voices in my head are a bit scary particularly your voice in my head that's quite yes, you can. <laughs> uh so I, I want to answer your question i don't want to wait for several weeks um the, the the form in which i see this it's very different um i mean for example today i was in the room with paul and jp and i've been you know I've been working with them for multiple times. So I, I remember them from multiple times. And the thing that really strikes me is that each of them, firstly, each of them is very, very good. Okay, so, and they are very creative. And each of them has a different style, which is very different from mine. Mm. So Paul will come up with these very short lines, which will just open up a topic that I would not have even thought of. Right. And he does that in the middle of a poem. And then it actually fits in. But it's very different. It's like a sudden turn, which is very, very interesting. So that's something which is very, very good. Um, it, I, I was stunned. I, I'm stunned by it every time he does it. Can I echo that quickly? Uh, Steve is that for me. So Steve is a left field. It's like, what? Ooh, I, wasn't see, I didn't see where that came from. Right. So yeah, Steve, Steve for me is your, is your Oh, yeah. Right. And and the again, so the one part is content, right? That is something different. The other part is short. Like he can do very short lines which have a punch to them. Uh, so that's that's Paul. Now JP has this incredible ability of rhyming. So firstly, he can do rhyming just very, very well. Secondly, he can also do he can look at a line which is there and he can add something which goes very well with it and has a musical quality. Almost everything that he does has a musical quality to it. Uh, so it's not just pure rhyme, but it is like, it, it is kind of the juxtaposition of like two things that he puts together. There is a meaning, there is like a, rhyming in meaning that is happening uh, in, in the things he does. So to work with people who are doing that. And by the way, I don't do either of those things. So it is really interesting to, to see that and, and learn from it a little bit. And uh, maybe if they are not at the level, they don't have I've not signed a rental agreement with them yet for my head. <laughs> so I don't, so they're not there in, in the head, but they have, they have made applications, you know? So maybe at some point, you know, little, little space for that, but go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I feel like things are, 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 are evolving now and like we've been uh, dating each other for, you know, 30 weeks. And I think we're ready to take it to the next level. And I think that next closer. level is, you know, that we've all been on our best behavior and we don't want to step on anyone's toes. But for me, I am ready to say that line is rubbish. Let's get rid of it. And we haven't done that for the first 30 weeks. So I think the editing process now, I mean, I feel I trust everyone in the class. And if someone says, Steve, that line is shit, 
you know, and we have three or four people that say, it's shit, oh, okay, okay, I'm gonna give it up. You know, uh, the group conscience tells me that we can improve that line. Oh, let's, that's kind of what I say. Oh, let's improve that line. And I think we're ready to kind of go to the next stage where we kind of take off the kid gloves and start. And I think we can handle it. I mean, I do have a sensitive ego and we are all poets, uh, but to, you know, make a better poem, to improve the poem, which I felt we could have done with this poem, you know, there were a few lines that just didn't work. And so I think we need more time uh, to, you know, edit and change the poem as no, we move forward. To, to Steve's point, I, I am seeing this as well. Today is um, unique in that almost every one of us has been here from the beginning with very few exceptions. Um, and it was, it was definitely very much, we're, we're ready to say not. And we did, we did a little bit, but there was, I see what Steve is saying is that we now feel more comfortable able to do that. And um, the, uh, it's, you know, the, the time that we spend kind of being like, well, I don't know, maybe we're less willing to waste that time, but like just make it go away. Um, not quite there yet. Cause I, I think we, we spent a little more time kind of dancing around. None of us liked these lines. And even those of us, it wasn't until those of us were like, okay, I put that line down and I, I think it's rubbish. And so we, we said that it wasn't that, you know, other people felt more free to do so. And, um, it's part of the growing process. And I think it's, um, it's great that, that we're doing that. I like that we're, we're ready to take this uh, relationship to the next level. Yay us. Um, I love that, um, you're getting Steve that we're evolving because I, that's truly what I'm getting as well. And um, honestly, that is so much more than what I could have hoped for when I started doing this. So I'm super stoked and I look forward to when we're celebrating the one year um, mark and you know, by then we'll all be a little bit in love with each other. It'll be great. Uh, go ahead, um, Paul. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't fully understand why this group helps me, but I, I know this group makes me be, become a better writer, but I don't know exactly why. And I don't have the voices in the head problem because I, I equate it, well, I, I'm not, a, I, I don't have book poems and books, but now it, turns out I'm going to have some poems in a collection in a book very soon. But that involves with other people who've also contributed poems and there's an editor. So when I give poems to that editor, I've never done that before. And the editor has comments. I have this license where I might say, well, that person is understanding how I'm trying, what I'm trying to say, and their comment is legitimate because what I'm trying to say isn't clear. But if they, they're trying to actually make me say something different, I just reject their edit. So when you're writing your own stuff, you have to be that way. Now, as opposed to in this group, I have a little, the things that Trikant thinks are left field, probably, most of them aren't to me, like we're in a given place in a poem and there's a natural thing I see. And to me, it's completely natural. And I bet he thinks it's left field, but this is hugely interesting and important. And uh, it helps me to not to let go and to not have this be my poem and to have it be this group think. And then my whole mind shifts from when I'm writing a poem, it's going to a collection, it's my poem, it's I've got, I want to go that way. I'm going that way. You're not going to change it. You know, it's just two different complete mindsets. And it's very valuable to have that group think one in here. So that's what I have to say about those things. Thanks, Paul. Uh, JP? I do understand about not wanting to touch somebody else's lines. Don't put your fingers in their finger paint, especially if you touch your nose. That's, don't double dip the nose paint, OK? However, in the last two weeks, we've been doing that. I think Paul was in the last one with me, and Count was in the last one with me, maybe even two weeks ago. And if nothing's going on, Shukran will just throw a line in there. 
It might be short like Paul does or kind of long like I do. And he'll put something in there and then say, you know, if you need to chop it down, work with it. Shukran's the first one to start suggesting as a leader, I'm open to change. That means you all are open to change. And I don't know who it was also last time with Paul, I think it was Marco. And some lines got dropped in. It was looking at some of the words saying that word needs to change. And even today, Paul's like, we've got a verb tense change in it. And I thought the verb tense worked because it was like building in the present. And then the last, that fourth line was looking at like the past. Here it is, here it is, here it is. But it was. But when we took the was away and made the two lines flow, then it was like, okay, it's still going now. It's not getting stuck and jammed before you get to the next season. So we've changed the lines. We've thrown ourselves before the bus and said, I want to get on the bus. Oops and gotten slammed, but it works. So I'm, I'm saying open up y'all. <laughs> We've, I, I believe it's with time, it's been happening more and more. And that's part of, I think what, you know, Steve is saying here is that, you know, some of the um, edits and the changes that we say and do today are ones that we probably would never have done, you know, maybe 10 weeks ago, even 15 weeks ago. Because you know now you're you're feeling emboldened. You understand that everyone here stems from a place of respect. So if they're saying your line is rubbish, it's not necessarily a reflection at all on you. Go ahead, JP. Yeah, I hope I'm not making anybody think that I would say anything coming in is rubbish. Actually, I just think it's that that moment to put the ideas together. Because Shukant is right. There are times you're looking at one person going, "Why is his line so short?" Why didn't make such a bold statement and leave it open for me? Now I have to follow through on this. Left field, Paul's throwing the fastest speed balls. I'm like, what do you mean I've already had three strikes? I'm still standing here. That was three ball. Oh, man. And I'm trying to work up and going, how does he sound? What does he want that to go to? And then if I come up with a line and Marco comes up with a line and it starts flowing, then there's something somebody else puts in. It's like, now we've got to make these lines work. What did Paul think? What did Marco want? What did Chukran try to say when he started taking it this way? How do we make it work? And that's when I get the voices like DLJ says there, those voices, where are they going? What are they saying? Did we get enough sense of sensations? Do we get enough percepts of perceptions? Are we going into some kind of order? And as Chukran was talking about metaphors, did we break our metaphors open enough to use them better or did we trash them? <laughs> So I think it's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy this so much. You'll have no idea. I can't believe that I would collaborate with anybody. Not that you wouldn't take away from me, but because trying to build together is so difficult. If anybody here has been in any position where somebody says, the two of you are in charge together, and you look at each other and think, I don't like this person enough to do that. Or I like this person too much to actually open my mouth. I need them to be totally in charge. And then you work together. It's like, man, trying to get these ideas to flow. And then when it does, you'll look good. This is so much fun. She can't. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to clarify one thing. See, what happens is that the thing I like, for example, with Paul's, these lines, right? What is unexpected to one person is not ex unexpected to the other person. And the second thing is that when it is unexpected, when it is put down, but once it is put down, then your mind starts to integrate it with everything else. And then you see, you can slowly see how it can be integrated. The person who put the line in, in the first place knew that that could be done. That's why they put it there. But you realize it. And it actually makes the poem far more interesting than you would have otherwise done. Because what happens is that, like, otherwise, at least my mind runs in a certain direction. And this is like showing, oh, wait a minute. You can go this way and come back. And that's a very interesting path. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I see that. I see that in, in all of ours as with each week. And I love, I, you know, my, my favorite comment is, um, you know, where, where Steve says that, you know, we're, there's an evolution happening here, which is fantastic. Um, and also, uh, you know, Paul, now that you mentioned it, I hadn't quite, consciously pondered this, but you're absolutely right in the idea of, you know, this group makes writing easier all around and different things. They, um, 
it's kind of like, you know, we're flexing our, um, our muscles in, you know, writing more on demand. And um, as somebody who tends to overthink everything, it does, this does, tend to bleed over in other things it's it's easier now to do something a little more in demand because I'm pretty much I'm practicing it all the time here uh, go ahead Shikant. um I I want to talk about the impact that this group has had on me this poetry group so firstly I did that series on Carl Jung that's all your fault okay because because it's like I never would have thought of presenting things that way and that's what I did um now, what I'm seeing is like the work that I'm doing on metaphors. I'm just very, very deeply into that and of language. I find that this meetup actually is the best way for me to see concretes, both in terms of poems being written, like the poems that uh, Maritza read today. I mean, they were stunning. They are stunning of saying, oh, look what can be done with language. Same thing happens in the collaborative um, group because you have a certain way of using language. And here are people who are using language differently, bringing up different topics, making connections, using metaphors that you would not have used. And then you can see how it, how it works. You can see the you know, differences in style and somehow they, they work, you know, you, you can make them work together. So, um, so it's, it's been amazing for me, both from the perspective of producing something which is unusual, like the young meetups and providing a testing ground for this fairly elaborate study that I'm doing on, on language. So, so thank you folks. So does anyone have in mind, um, I don't have a lot of mind right now, and a poet that they might want to suggest for next week? I am open to suggestion. If not, it's okay, I'll come up with them. I, I don't have the wherewithal, right? I'm not ready right now to, to I don't have one, but um, I'm happy to take a suggestion. Can I, can I suggest somebody? Yes, of course. Um, I was thinking of uh, William Blake. I'm actually oh, yeah. not really familiar with him, but it's an incredible, very, very unique style and subjects. So that, that's what I was thinking. All right, let's let's do it, William Blake. And what do you um let's let's do the call and response again. And what do you guys think for a potential um theme? Anyone want to try their hand at a suggestion? Hearing crickets. Um, well, can I can I ask you, Ken, what he was? What, what I like Blake. Um, Blake has a certain something. So, in in your head, what is Blake? Because that could be the theme. I I'm not familiar yet with Blake as much. I know that he actually captures meaning of spirituality. I wonder if that was, yeah, that would be the word in, I might take. In his yeah. own way, in a completely unique way. And he, you know, he creates his own world uh, using that. So it's just like, I like his approach to spirituality, which is kind of, which is modern, which is not just direct from the scriptures, but he presents it, he thinks about it in his own way. Uh, that's that's what I've gotten from it. And the second thing is he, um, you know, he's in this romantic tradition where he just goes all out and saying, yes, I can capture this in poems. Here it is. Um, so those are the two, two impressions I have of him. And I, whenever I think about him, I always think of his paintings that actually go very well with the with the poems. Um, so it's 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 what what a romantic poet can do. 
Hmm. So um, he's most known for his poem, um, his collection, uh, Songs of um, Innocence and Experience. Oh, it's, it's, it's something to do with it. He's got a, he's got a, a poem that talks about, uh, you know, the, uh, the good angels and the, the evil angels. Um, I'm trying to see what I can shape there for. He had the line, mind forged manacle, which has stuck, me, stuck with me since I was <laughs> Did he write the poem Heaven and Hell? Mm. I he might have. He may not have called it that, but he's done many. Um, it's a it's like a, a popular theme of his. He likes to explore the um the metaphysical from that um tangent. Uh how how would you do a call and response for heaven versus hell? That seems a little bit dark mm. could end up dark well but dark is okay there's there's no no problem with dark um it might be an interesting thought experiment again the for me one of the fascinating things is that you guys are all accidentally um shedding your subconscious all over our 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 monday evenings so um, we'll and that's a lot of fun hmm? sorry we'll clear up afterwards <laughs> no worries well, no. okay uh joe it's only going to be dark if heaven starts and then hell responds if we go the other way yeah that's true it would be right off. we could try that what do you guys think is that yeah, too it could be kind of hard? Yeah. Yeah, joe's I, not convinced no i no i think it actually it can work what do you think steve i'm just thinking of uh, faust that's the reason why i was thinking it's dark well you could integrate him um i was <laughs> thinking that it would be interesting as to what people's idea of heaven is Mm -hmm. and then what are people's idea of you know what hell is right well and then the fun Other thing people. is that in a call and response you'll get that because again <laughs> you're writing a poem your subconscious is like i said it's leaving stuff everywhere <laughs> so so let's see I, I don't nobody is screaming in her horror at the idea i don't know she can't you have pretty good poker face yeah, no, no, no. I think it's it's good that people are not screaming even in hell. So yeah, so I don't know. I guess we're gonna we 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 think we're so badass. We're gonna try call a response for heaven. And and hell. I, I agree that you have to first go through hell and then go to heaven. So hell. Yeah, you know, actually, it is. Hell and then hell follows heaven. Dante actually yeah. to, to a certain degree. Yes. Yeah. I think I'll be screaming in heaven. In order it's to really go boring to me. But yeah. Say again. You go down in order to go up. <laughs> When yeah. we did Dante, we lost several people in hell, I think. <laughs> we did. <laughs> we yeah, you totally seven. lost me in hell. I was like, I'm out. Tap in, out. I'm not like this. Well, we'll it's not the path that we thought we were going to go. I was not. I, I, my hell is not going to be Dante's hell. I just flat out refuse and reject the premise. No way. Speaking like a true atheist. <laughs> I actually don't identify as atheist, um, but sure. Might be closer. I think it's LAX. LAX. <laughs> okay, I got a, I got a dash. It's uh, four a.m. Well, so. we're, 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 oh. we're done. Um, thank okay. you so much, guys. Um, well, she appreciate it. Yes, this was great. So we're going to do uh, um, William Blake, and uh, we're going to um, tackle heaven and hell as a call. No, hell and heaven. Hell and heaven. Yeah. There. All right. Awesome. Great. See you guys um, next week. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Shikant, for MCing today. Bye.